Hey, what was that funky instrument you were playing when the video started? It's an iwi, electronic wind instrument. That was an iwi, electronic wind instrument. Pretty sure that's Thanks, an iwi. Thanks, guys. Okay, I get it. Okay. I'm fairly certain it was an iwi. Heard of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, electronic wind instrument. instrument. So you've just discovered the iwi. Maybe you are a normal music listener who stumbled upon this weird robo oboe thing, or you're an eager musician interested in learning more about this yourself. I'm here today to show you all the cool things you can do with this instrument, and why you might want to consider investing in one yourself. The iwi was originally conceived in the late 1960s by Niall Steiner. The instrument was originally conceived as a brass-style synthesizer, with the first concept centering around using trumpet valves to press down a string and playing harmonics on the single string somehow. The first Steiner horn was completed in 1975 and served as a model for similar instruments to be made later on, which would be referred to as wind controllers. Though the term iwi has grown to encompass much of the wind controller industry, the name iwi refers to a specific brand of wind controllers manufactured by Akai. Now Steiner's iwi and EV, electronic valve instrument, were sold to Akai in 1986, who took those designs and eventually produced the EWI 1000. Akai has developed these models and since then produced the EWI 4000S, the EWI 5000, and the EWI USB, um, which are the leading models in the wind controller industry to date. Other companies have produced their own wind controllers that function similarly, such as the Roland Aerophone, the Yamaha WX5, and the Lyricon produced by Computone. Before I go further on, this video isn't sponsored by Akai or any other companies. I just want to help you guys learn more about the EWI itself. I do, however, have Amazon affiliate links available in the description. So if you do choose to um, go down the path of the EWI for yourself, if you click one of the links down below, you can help support me at no additional cost to you by purchasing through Amazon. If you've ever looked up the EWI on YouTube, you've probably come across some Michael Brecker videos. Brecker is one of my all-time favorite saxophone players, so it was incredibly interesting for me to see him translate his saxophone vocabulary onto another seemingly novelty instrument. In the clip, Michael Brecker plays EWI, Brecker's playing an EWI 3000 and taking advantage of the EWI's wide tonal variety, looping capabilities, and extreme range to create a film score style creation all by himself on stage. You also might have seen this video by Japanese jazz fusion band T Square. I love T Square. T Square has integrated the EWI into their own. Japanese 80s jazz fusion sound that I've come to know and love. In this particular video, Masato Honda is playing the EWI 3020 in a more straightforward lead instrument style role than Brecker's film scorey stuff. In another famous T-Square video from 10 years later, T-Square is still putting the EWI up front, this time with Takashi Ito playing EWI in Takarajima. T-Square knows how to get the Japanese crowds going. Bands such as T-Square have also left their mark on the video game soundtracks as well. The entire soundtrack of the first game I ever played, Wave Race 64, is very, very heavily influenced by T-Square sound. This is especially notable in the track Dolphin Park, which features a lead tone very similar to Masato Honda's Iwi tone. Okay, I promise I won't nerd out about T-Square anymore. I promise I'm, comple I'm completely done. I'm all done. So why exactly are these electronic wind instruments so appealing to woodwind players? To me, there are a lot of parallels to the popularization of the electric guitar starting in the 1930s. Just as guitar players were able to translate their skills to a new instrument with increased technical capability, saxophonists and other woodwind players now have a similar prospect with the Iwi. The Iwi 4000S and 5000 have an incredible seven octaves of range. By mastering the left-hand octave rolling technique, you can play licks up and down the entire range of the instrument at a speed that other instruments could only dream of doing. In my video, Studiopolis Zone Act 1 from Sonic Mania, the range of the Iwi combined with the ability to play extremely technical passages was super useful to play the really difficult opening lick in the song. All the Iwi models that we're discussing in this video have the ability to switch between different fingering modes. So regardless of whether you're a clarinetist, a saxophonist, an oboe player, a flute player, or even if you haven't had any experience with a woman instrument before, 
Um, the the EWI can be set up to have a fingering mode that is very similar to what you might be used to. The EWI also has a lot of very tonal possibilities. While the EWI is typically used with a brass-like tone in lead instrument situations, the EWI can also fill bass, chordal, and even percussive roles. Both the EWI 4000S and 5000 have capabilities of storing up to 100 user preset sounds. The EWI 5000 stores multi-sampled stereo patches that are aimed at replicating the sound of real instruments like clarinets, flutes, muted trumpets, and a bunch of other instruments. Conversely, the EB4000S has an internal analog style synthesizer, making it more equipped to handle digital tones. As you may have noticed in that previous clip, I was able to get some vibrato out of the EWI. You can do this by biting on the white part of the mouthpiece. This is made of silicone, so it's still firm, but flexible enough to where you can bite it and get some response out of it. You can either bite directly on the mouthpiece with your teeth, or roll your lips over your teeth and bite on it that way. Additionally, all EB models can be used as MIDI controllers for your digital audio workstation. I use my EB USB for this exact purpose, actually, when I used it to control a flute sample from Vienna Symphonic Library in my video, Everything's Alright. In my opinion though, the EWI excels the most when it's not trying to emulate real instruments. Because of the technical limitations of sampling and the amount of space that the EWI has on it dedicated to samples, the EWI can't, at least in the moment, in my opinion, replicate the nuances of most woodwind instruments. When it's used as a synthesizer for electronic sounds, there's not as much of a comparison to be made. Along with MIDI control changes, the EWI 4000S and 5000 models have special function buttons on the side. The top one is the hold button. What that allows you to do is play more than one note at once. Basically, it'll hold down the first note that you play and let you play other notes following it. You can also use this to play two notes at once by basically doing a grace note type of thing, where you play the first note, then you rapidly transition to the second. The octave button located right below the hold button lets you add an octave below the note that you're currently playing. So here's what it sounds like with it off. If I turn on the octave button, it adds another octave below. This octave button can be specifically reconfigured for other intervals. So if you ever played with a harmonizer pedal that's let you use fourths or fifths above or below, you can do the exact same thing on that UE. The octave button is really useful for playing low notes. or adding some um, beefy texture to higher lines. The EWI also has nearly limitless customization options, especially with how it responds to input. As a saxophonist, I've spent lots of time trying different reeds, breaking in techniques, and mouthpieces, trying to find the perfect setup. With the EWI, the process of experimenting with different levels of resistance and depth is really easy, since parameters can be adjusted using the knobs under the top control panel, and also on the setup menu of the EWI itself. You can adjust things like pitch bandwidth, breath sensitivity, vibrato depth, and key delay without any need for reed maintenance or mouthpiece shopping. Since the instrument is entirely electronic, it's also incredibly consistent, and it won't be affected by the weather like other many woodwind instruments are. From a more practical perspective, the EWI can be useful as a practice tool for saxophonists in living spaces with noise restrictions. I lived in an apartment here in Boston with fairly thin walls, so I've done this a few times myself, although I wouldn't necessarily advocate getting an EWI with the sole purpose of using it as a practice tool. There are also some practice techniques on the EWI that are nearly impossible to try out with any other woodwind instrument. One of these is practicing smooth finger movements without ever needing to blow into the mouthpiece. To set up the breath sensor dexterity exercise, you're gonna wanna take your EWI, press the setup button on it so it's in setup mode, and then take the knob at the bottom left of your knob control panel and turn it clockwise. You should see a little red line appear at the bottom when you turn it enough. 
the red line indicates that the EOE is receiving a breath signal. So if you keep turning it, you'll be increasing the volume. Get it to a decent volume sort of like this. And now, as long as you're holding the grounding plate, you can just This removes the possible conflation of articulation issues with technical issues, which is a very valuable practice tool in my opinion. On the subject of the right thumb, I should also mention that the EWI has some pitch bend tools here, and by pressing them, pressing into them with your thumb, you can cause the pitch to rise up or rise down. Lastly, you can't overlook the fact that this is a very interesting novelty instrument. Every video that I upload that features the EWI gets a ton of comments from people asking, what instrument is that? Or what is that weird metal saxophone thing you're playing? It's a very intriguing instrument that I think serves a bit of a niche purpose, but I still think has a ton of potential. Okay, okay, that's enough information. I'm already sold on this thing. Just let me get the EWI USB because it's the cheapest one and it's all I'm gonna- Hold on a second. Before we do that, let me try and help you avoid a pitfall that I fell into when I got my first EWI. We're just gonna be discussing the EWI USB, 4000S, and 5000 since they're the most readily available models. First, let's talk about the small boy, the EWI USB. Despite the lower price tag of just about 270 bucks on Amazon at the time of recording this video, I would strongly advise against getting the EWI USB, unless you're absolutely sure you're only gonna use the instrument as a MIDI controller. A lot of people get the EWI USB thinking it's gonna be a great cheap practice tool, but then they don't realize it doesn't make any sound by itself. This thing has no internal synthesizer. It is smaller and more lightweight than the 4000S or 5000, but it is significantly more inconvenient to use. I got this EWI USB in the summer of 2013 and was quickly disappointed with it when I realized I had to keep it plugged in all the time. It does ship with the Garreton Aria player, which offers a few decent sounds, but really nothing impressive. I would only recommend this if you know absolutely sure that you're only going to use the EWI for controlling virtual instrument libraries. Even if you're sure about that, give it another thought, because the other EWI models offer so much more. Next up is the EWI 5000. I don't have one of these on hand myself, but I played one for a part of a semester when I took an EWI doubling class at the Berkeley College of Music. The 5000 has some nice features, such as a rechargeable battery, wireless capabilities, and an auto power off. It is a big step up from the EWI USB in features, but also price, as it's about 800 bucks on Amazon. It does have the added convenience of an onboard sample library, which means you can turn it on, plug in your headphones, or plug it into an amp, and choose any of the onboard sounds and just go ahead and play. It's super easy to get set up with. However, I still wouldn't recommend this for one main reason, the tones. As I said earlier, I think the EWI stands out the most when it's not trying to emulate other real instruments. The sample libraries on the EWI 5000 are made with the intent of sounding like real instruments. They are editable to some extent, and there are some decent digital sounds on it, but it's nothing compared to what the 4000S offers you, in my opinion. I'd rather you not get stuck with subpar emulations of real instruments that will leave you wanting more. The EB4000S fixes this problem when combined with the sound bank available from Patch for Music. Patch for Music is an awesome dealer that specializes in wind controller related items, including a sound bank for the EB4000S, which I have installed. The EB4000S is a slightly older model EB, first produced in December 2005, but it really holds up to today's standards. The build quality is extremely sturdy, and it has most functions you would want on an EB. The 4000S unfortunately does not have a rechargeable battery, wireless capabilities, or USB MIDI out, but all those problems can be circumvented with getting your own power adapter or rechargeable batteries, uh, a wireless adapter, and just getting some good old MIDI cables. I would highly recommend the EWI 4000S coupled with the Patch for Music sound bank if you're serious about getting into the EWI. Patch for Music does offer an EWI 4000S bundle with a sound bank pre-installed for 750 bucks, which is a nice price. Alternatively, you can shop around for the EWI 4000S on the used market since it's been around a while, or you can get one of these on Amazon and the Patch for Music sound bank separately. You will need your 5-pin MIDI cables to install that sound bank along with an interface that supports that. That's all the information I think you're going to need. To me, the EWI is such an incredible instrument that has a lot of potential on the world of making music. I am very grateful that I have the platform that I do, allowing me to, you know, broadcast this instrument to the world and have more people know about this thing, because there is so much potential with it, and I love to see what you guys are able to do with it. Um, if you do end up purchasing the EWI yourself, let me know. I love to hear some of your playing and, give, and help you with any technical issues. Just shoot me an email or hit me up on Twitter or something like that. Thanks for watching this video. I'm hoping to experiment with more videos like this that aren't necessarily music videos, but also but more like talking about music kind of videos like this in the future. Um, so let me know what you thought of this and how I might be able to improve the format. If you have any specific things you'd like me to talk about or shed some light on, um, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do about that. Thanks.